Chris at Sherlock Bay. Hope you've had a great day. Hope you've had a, a great. Hope you had a great weekend. I'm recording this a day late. I was going to record it yesterday. I came home from work totally exhausted and fell asleep shortly after getting home after reading supper. But today I want to talk about a man that was thrown into prison and was under heavy guard. This man's name was Peter. Now I want to talk about how prayer is effective. How 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 there is some power in prayer. And something I noticed yesterday, I didn't realize this, uh, had this message prepared, but then I looked at the Facebook memories. It was like last year I did a message on power and prayer. And I just thought that was quite cool. Even I had no, I didn't realize it, but so yeah, you get a, a message about prayer, how there's power in prayer. Y'all believe that today, that there's power in prayer. But our the, the, those in shackles and chains, can be broken by the power of prayer and set free today. Our Bible reading will take place in the book of Acts chapter 12. Uh, we're going to be starting off with verses 1 through 11. And when you have it, say amen. Amen. Starting at verse 1. Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James the brother of John with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four uh, quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but Peter was made, but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise, up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did, and he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through, the, through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me, delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. If you bow your heads, we're going to pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. You give us, God, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I ask you let this message be a seed planted in someone's life today, God. Let us let it grow and nurture, nurture in them, God, and let us realize that there is still power in prayer. There was power in prayer, and there still is power in prayer today, God. And let just help us to understand and realize that today, that we have power when we pray through you, Jesus. And we love you today, and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. It's in prayer, church. Say amen. 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 Today, I would like to preach a message called Break the Chains. I said break the the chains. We just read that Herod, and this was Herod Agrippa, which was Herod the Great's grandson, had James, the brother of uh, John, executed. The Bible says that this pleased the Jews, so wanting to stay that course or stay on that path, he sought to take Peter as well. So he was going to imprison Peter. It was also during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which would make a profound statement if he locked Peter up in prison during that time. He intended to bring him out for a public trial uh, after the Passover. And we see that he was assigned to, and this is kind of a hard word to say, four quaternions of soldiers. A quatern quaternion, quaternion is a group or set of four persons or things. It's a set of four. Luke states in the book of Acts that after uh, arresting him, he was put into prison and was handed over to four squads of four soldiers each you know they would take shifts but peter was chained in between two soldiers by his hands he was in between two soldiers and then you had two soldiers that were standing watch they were standing guard by the door and herod, herod was taking no chances with this there was there was no way humanly possible that peter would be able to escape 
Now notice I said there's no way humanly possible Peter could escape, but as we all know, God's ways are not our ways. God's ways is not humanly ways. Amen? Y'all agree with that? Verse 5 says that he was but that he was held in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing. What does that mean? That means they were prayed, the church was praying without stopping. They were constantly praying to God for Peter. And I want you to understand that right there. Luke wanted us to know that Peter was locked up. He wanted us to know, because, you know, uh, he Peter must have, you know, told Luke about his experience, what had happened. So Luke wanted us to know that, hey, this is what he said, He and how secure Peter's was locked up. He, You know, it was made clear he's tied, he's bound with chains in between two soldiers. He's bound with chains. There's two more. He made sure that we knew that there were four squads of four soldiers guarding him and the cell. And Luke also goes on to say, you know what? Prayer was made without stopping for Peter unto God. And I know you've heard it many times and you'll keep hearing it, but about how powerful prayer is. Back in those days, Prayer was powerful, and guess what? Even in today's world, power. There is power in prayer. So you never stop praying for your family. You never stop praying for your children, your your uh, friends. You never stop praying for these people because there's power in prayer. Never stop praying. Prayer was made without ceasing to God for Peter. And when prayer is made and God hears that prayer, how many of y'all know things start to happen? Do y'all agree with that? When prayer is made, God hears these prayers, things start to happen, chains begin to loose, uh, prison walls, they begin to fall, doors begin to open. Amen? Y'all agree with that statement? Peter's asleep. He's between two guards. Like I said, he's bound in chains. It was the night before he would go to trial, and an angel of the Lord woke Peter up. And, and you know, it's kind of funny here. Peter, you know, had to have told Luke this story. This is what happened to me. He says, you know, like, I, I'm asleep between two soldiers here, and suddenly I get smacked. I, see, I get smacked in the face and, by an angel, and it, it tells me to get up. Could you imagine that story? Because that's, he literally says he was smote by the side, of, by, on the side by an angel. So it wasn't like the angel just said, hey, hey, get up. No, get up, quickly, get up. So, you know, he's like, I'm here, I'm between two soldiers, and suddenly I get smacked, and I'm told to get up by this angel. And it says, the angel of the Lord came upon him, a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter. That wasn't, hey, what up? He smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, arise, get up quickly. And his chains, what? His chains fell off. Chains fell off from his hands. So he gets smacked on the side, and he's told to get up. The chains fall off from his hands. Can you picture this? In your head can you picture this moment being bound tight fast asleep woken up by a smack and then you you're by an angel that's telling you to get up and then all of a sudden the chains that were binding you down the chains that were holding you down they're no longer holding you anymore they're loose they fall from your hands can you imagine that today it was so much for Peter that initially he didn't even know if this was really happening Peter was not sure he thought maybe he was just seeing a vision or he was dreaming he didn't know if this was real. And it says, the Bible says that he went out and followed the angel, but he didn't know if it was true what was done by the angel. But he thought he saw a vision. He follows the angel, and once they're past the first and second ward or precinct, they come to this iron gate. This, this uh, could, could look like he got out. He got past all the, the, the two ward, wards just to be stopped by this large iron gate. But the gate opens on its own accord. They came unto the gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street. Shortly after that, that the angel departed. And Peter, I'm sure, you know, being still being in the day, still trying to think about exactly what was going on. Was this a vision? Was this a dream? Was this really happening? Like, what's going on? Was he really standing on the street, no longer bound in chains? Had he really, truly been set free? Have you ever had those moments when you wake up and things are going down or quickly or whatever, and then you, you're not sure what was going on? Or maybe you wake up from a dream, and then you're trying to remember, well, did this happen, or was I just dreaming? I'm sure everybody has been there at some point in their life, waking up in a dream, trying to comprehend what was going on. 
Maybe you wasn't woken up to a, uh, an angel slapping you across the face saying, hey, get up, trying to get you out of prison. But you know what I mean, you know, when you wake up and you're kind of in a daze. But it finally dawns on Peter what had just happened truly did happen. He was free. He no, he no longer had the chains bound, binding him, his hands. And when and the Bible says, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety. There was no doubt. It was confirmed. The Lord had sent his angel and delivered him out of the, the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. So when he come to himself, he knew that the Lord had actually sent an angel to deliver him from Herod's hand. He knew it. There was no question. It was all confirmed. He understood it then. It wasn't a vision. He truly had been set free. The church was praying without ceasing. There was power in prayer to break the chains. There's still power in prayer to break the chains. There's power in the name of Jesus. That should get somebody excited today that there's power in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that today? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in prayer. That is why I said earlier to never stop praying for your kids. Never stop praying for your family. Never stop praying for your friends. Prayer without ceasing can break the chains of addiction. Prayers without ceasing can break the chains of adultery. Prayers without ceasing can break the chains of drunkenness, alcoholism. Prayer without ceasing, without ceasing can break the chains of sin. Amen? It can break these chains. Some of us, we've been in a prison chained between two soldiers of sin while, try, while we have two other soldiers watching us, uh, just daring us to try to get out, and just daring us to try to escape. Some of us are chained in addiction. Some of us are chained in pornography. Some of us are chained in depression. Some of us are chained in doubt. Some of us are chained in self-doubt. Prayer without ceasing can break these chains. And all these and more. It can bring peace back into your lives. Never stop praying. Amen? You, your kids, your family, your friends, you may not be in this physical jail restrained, but you could be chained down in sin and all these other things that was mentioned. But there is power in prayer today to break the chains of sin in your life. That is one reason why Paul wrote to the Thessalonians to rejoice and to pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. We are not meant to live bound up in chains. We're not meant to be bound up in chains of fear and of sin. We do not have to stay bound in this. For the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person has the power to produce wonderful results. James 5, 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, sometimes it's hard to process what had just happened. And it was no different for the church when Peter arrived at the door and knocking. You know, the Bible says that Peter went to Mary's house and knocked on the door, and a woman named Rhoda heard his voice. When she came, to the, she didn't open the door. She heard his voice, went to the door, heard his voice, and, and out of excitement, ran back and told everybody else, hey, Peter's out, he's out at the door. She didn't open the door. She was excited and left poor Peter standing out there in the dark by the side of the road at the door knocking. And they didn't believe what she was saying. These believers that had been gathered together in the name of Jesus praying for Peter's deliverance. But when it happens, they refuse to believe it. Acts 12, 12-17 12 And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she, heard, when she knew Peter's voice, she opened the gate for, 
She opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said it was that they said it was then said they it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had heard, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren, and he departed and went into another place. Sometimes we can be like this. Even though that they had been praying without ceasing to God for him, when he's finally set free and the chains are broken, the chains are laying on the ground, and he's standing at the door knocking, they don't believe. They even tell the woman, look, woman, you're crazy. You're hearing things. You're seeing things. Peter's not here. It's, it, it's got to be his spirit. It's got to be his ghost. They even tell the woman that, she, he's, that, that she's just crazy. And when they open the door, they see him, and they're surprised. They're, they're impressed. Like, whoa, it really is Peter standing at the door. You're supposed to be bound up in chains, locked up in a prison, surrounded by soldiers. How are you standing here at the door? But unfortunately, we get this mindset at times when we've been praying for someone. We've been praying for something or condition for someone uh, for a chain to be broken. And when it happens, we have a hard time believing it. Almost like known alcoholics put away the drink after many years. We've been praying for this to happen. We've been praying that they put it down. We've had a hard time accepting that a you know that a long time drug addict can put down the drugs. You know, so and so they don't drink anymore. So and so they're they're not hitting the 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 high anymore. They're not doing these things anymore. I can't believe it. it's crazy. But we've been praying for it. Now it's a hard time. We have a hard time accepting that God can break the chains in their lives. Amen? Some people, we still look at people and we judge people the way we used to remember them. We act like people can't, aren't able to change at times. We act like, but that's a whole other sermon. That's a whole, a whole different topic. We've been praying for our children to make the right choices. How many of you pray, which is only one person here that's a parent besides me, but if you were here, how many of you pray for your children that you're going to, they're going to make the right decision? Pray that they're going to make the right choice. How many times do you think they could do something different and you're praying that maybe... Amen. <laughs> Anyways, I know we all pray for our children with different things. You want your kid to make the right decisions. You want your kid... But it's true. There's power in prayer for things to happen. There's power in prayer for chains to break. There's power today to break the chains that bind us in our lives. There's power in prayer when chains begin to break. And that's something we can definitely believe in today. The chains that we knew held somebody down. The chains that maybe even held us down. Or maybe There may be times you didn't even think you'd, the chains in your own life would be able to break. Sometimes that's hard to believe. It's like, wow, look where God brought me from. But we can believe that today because there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in prayer. Amen. Bow your heads with us to pray. Lord, we thank you for the state you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I ask that anybody that's under the sound of my voice at this time, God, if there's anybody listening, God, if there's anybody that's seeking, they're wanting to know more, God, that you will let this message touch them in a way that I don't even see it being. Help it to reach these people, God, that need to hear this message, that there is power in prayer, that there is power in your precious name. There is power to break the chains, that they've been facing something, they've been struggling with something, they've been going through something, God, that we can know that we can turn to you because there is that power in your name, that there is power when we pray. There is power when we talk to you, God, that, that can break these chains of the sins that bind us down today. And we love you today, God, and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. It just ain't praying the church say amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. I got a couple announcements real quick. It's actually just two announcements. Sunday, July 23rd. What, what day does that? Does that mean anything to anybody? July 23rd. Anybody know what that day is? We will be celebrating True Life Way's sixth year anniversary. 
six years of being able to preach the gospel on true on uh, Facebook and YouTube. We'll have a special sermon for that, but of course I'm working that day. I always, I'm all, you know, it's, it's always something, but it's all good. We will have something special prepared for that day. And I also want to say, if you ever need prayer or anything, we do have a Facebook group that you can join. You're welcome to join that, or you can always message us on Facebook, or you can email us at truelifeway at hotmail.com. Uh, while I was at work yesterday, I was in the process. I'm, I was looking at making a website getting some stuff going for that a free website because we don't have no money bro <laughs> but uh i don't know i'm just trying to come up with any way i possibly can to get the news spread further and further you know if it and you know just so we can get more involvement with people and people can get more involved with the, the ministry and all that good stuff oh on uh, july 14th we'll be doing the annual bible study uh, bible reading we're actually going to be uh, joined with the church on uh, what are they? Call, what's their name? The, the 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 way the way in downtown Winder. They'll be meeting up with us, so it'll be nice to have good fellowship with that. Reading the Bible on that day, the whole Bible will be read on that day. And the good thing is, I'm off that day. <laughs> it's the one time I can actually get to be off and actually do that, and not have to worry about getting back to work. But anyway, so that being said, we hope you uh, got something out of this message today. We love you guys. God bless you, and we will see you on the next one. Take care.